In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, the Son of the living God, says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is another word for wickedness, lawlessness, or sin. Sin is defined in the first epistle written by John, chapter 3, verse 4, as the transgression of God's law, His holy and perfect Ten Commandments. If you abide in sin or iniquity, then, according to Christ's own words, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, you are not doing the will of God the Father. The prophet of God writes in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. If you sin against God and did not repent from your sins, God will not hear you. The priests and pastors of today's lukewarm Laodicean and Babylonian churches do not preach the law of God, nor do they preach the de definition of what sin is, or just as important, the consequences of staying in your sin. In fact, some of the preachers in these churches go as far as saying that the holy and perfect Ten Commandments of God, which define the love of God according to the first epistle written by John in chapter 5 verse 3, are no longer applicable. Andy Stanley, a pastor of the 34,000 member North Point Community Church in suburban Atlanta, is one of several pastors who says that the Ten Commandments of God are no longer applicable. Why did Mr. Stanley say what he did? The answer is provided in Romans chapter 8 verse 7 which says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Mr. Stanley was definitely not speaking through the Holy Spirit when he said that the Ten Commandments of God need not to be kept anymore, but rather he has a carnal mind, void of God, living in him. After all, this was prophesied to happen according to Psalm chapter 119, verse 126, which says, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. To be blunt, Mr. Stanley is a false preacher who is not following the will of God, but of Satan, the enemy of God and man, Satan, that miserable, pathetic being, knows all too well that by rejecting the holy law of God, you sin against God. And as per Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, sin separates you from God. And to make things worse, sin leads to death, according to Romans chapter 6 verse 23. The likes of Mr. Stanley are deceiving their followers and are leading them straight to the pits of hellfire and eventually to death for rejecting what is holy unto God, His holy Ten Commandments. In speaking of lawless pastors, the Apostle Paul writes in the second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 13 to 15, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. What did the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua say about His law, His holy Ten Commandments? In John chapter 14 verse 15, Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Yeshua or Jesus says to keep His holy Ten Commandments if you love Him, not to destroy the law of God as Mr. Stanley has claimed. Further, in Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 and 18, Jesus Christ or Yeshua says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. The Greek word used in the Bible for fulfill is pliru, which means to fully teach to fully reveal in the Strong's Concordance, 
number G4137. In other words, fulfill means to carry out, to perform, to apply, to obey, to bring into effect. Yeshua or Jesus Christ did not come to destroy his own law, but to apply it as an example for all of us to follow. Why then are Christians in the 501c3 government registered apostate churches saying that fulfill means done or finished? The opposite of destroy is to apply, to implement, which is again the opposite of done or finished. In verse 18 of the same chapter, Jesus Christ adds, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth have not passed away. So the law of God still stands and will always stand. If the law of God was done away with, why would the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God manifested in the flesh, say to the young rich man in Matthew chapter 19 verse 17, If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. As followers of Christ, we must follow Christ's holy and perfect example as per the first epistle written by Peter in chapter 2 verse 22 who speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ where he writes who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth Revelation chapter 14 verses 4 and 5 speaks of God's saints who also have no guile found in their mouths. These are the same saints who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus or Yeshua according to Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. By claiming that the holy law of God is no longer applicable, there is no light and there is no truth in Mr. Stanley and other pastors in Sunday keeping churches. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The first epistle written by John chapter 2 verse 4 adds, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Based on these two Bible verses, Mr. Stanley and others who say that the law of God is no longer applicable are liars, and there's no truth or light found in them. Liars will not be part of the kingdom of God, according to Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 and Revelation chapter 22 verse 15. Why on earth would Christians listen to this false prophet, Mr. Stanley, whom the Bible calls a liar, a deceitful worker, and a minister of Satan? Speaking of deceitful workers and ministers of Satan, Satan's main human agent, the Antichrist Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, has either deleted or changed God's Ten Commandments, including the elimination of God's Second Commandment against the worship of graven images and idols, the changing of the fourth commandment on the seventh day Sabbath, and the tenth commandment against coveting. The Vatican's own website admits that their version of the Ten Commandments do not align with the Holy Ten Commandments of God as they are found in Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 to 17. Look inside any Catholic church building or even on its property and there are statues or graven images of Mary to which I've personally seen deceived Catholic souls pray to and thus unbeknownst to them they are breaking the second commandment of God in Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 which does not appear in the Roman Catholic Church's version of the Ten Commandments. The Vatican, which receives its power from the dragon or Satan in Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, also changed God's holy seventh-day Sabbath commandment, which points to the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua as the Creator. The seventh-day Sabbath is the only day which God has sanctified, blessed or hallowed. Yet the Vatican, under Satan's influence, changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week or Sunday in the fourth century. Nowhere in the Bible does God command a change on the timing of the seven day Sabbath to any other day of the week. Nowhere in the Bible does God sanctify, bless or hallow 
Sunday. The change in the day of worship or rest was made by the Vatican in the 4th century at its Council of Laodicea from the 7th day to the 1st day of the week, which goes contrary to biblical jurisprudence. From the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine on page 50, 3rd edition, published in 1957, we read, Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Under Satan's influence, the Vatican made the change in the day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday not to honor Christ's resurrection, but to honor the sun god Mithra or Baal, who was worshipped by pagans on the first day of the week in ancient Babylon, nine centuries before Christ. Keep in mind that Sunday worship came into effect approximately 800 years before Christ arrived on earth. Sunday worship has nothing to do with Christ, but rather it has everything to do with sun worship. Sunday worship was kept by the Roman Empire when it embraced the practices of conquered pagan lands. Now you know why the first day of the week, known also as Sunday, which during the reign of Constantine, the sun worshiping Roman Emperor, was known as the Venerable Day of the Sun. After its demise, the Roman Empire became the Roman Catholic Church. Caesar became the Pope, and Sunday worship became a commandment of the Pope at the Vatican's Council of Laodicea in the 4th century. Look inside any Catholic Church building, and you will see symbols of the Sun, S-U-N, including the monstrance, which is a receptacle that has an image of the sun around it. The Vatican beast, which is the beast or kingdom that rises out of the sea in Revelation chapter 13, says the following about Sunday. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. Yes, it did say that. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. This is quoted in the Catholic Record of London, Ontario on September 1st, 1923. The Roman Catholic Church is above the Bible? Who else claims that he's above God or is like God? According to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, Satan wants to be like the Most High. Satan's human puppet, the Pope, has also stated that he is like God. According to the following statement made by Pope Pius V, the Pope and God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and earth. This was quoted by Pope Pius V, quoted in Barclay chapter 28, page 218, in Citrus Petrus Bertanus. Both Satan and the Pope have claimed that they are like God. This is blasphemy. This is why the Pope is a son of perdition, wicked one, and man of sin. In the second epistle written by Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2 verses 3 to 17 when he claims to be God this is why the Pope is Antichrist who leads his followers to sin against God by observing commandments which the Pope has modified or deleted from God's Holy Ten Commandments this points to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 which says and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time to show you how accurate the bible is please listen carefully to the following statement the pope has the power to change times to abrogate laws and to dispense with all things even the precepts of christ this is quoted in decretal the Atlantic Episcopal and Cap Parasises Ecclesiastical Dictionary. Was this not prophesied by the Holy Prophet of God in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25? The words change times are the exact same words in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 that were used by the Vatican in their statement. Of a truth, the Pope is Antichrist, based on Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. 
Not only is Satan using his ministers in the 501c3 government registered churches to claim that the law of God is no longer applicable, as Mr. Stanley has stated, but through his main human agent at the Vatican, the Pope, he has deleted or changed a few of God's holy ten commandments to make Catholics sin against God. Deceived Catholic souls are sinning unbeknownst to them by observing a commandment of man, Sunday observance originating from ancient Babylon or are unaware that some commandments are missing or have been changed by the Pope. They are worshipping God in vain by following the commandments of their Pope, which points to Matthew chapter 15 verse 9. If you reject the law of God or follow a modified version of God's Holy Ten Commandments, you're essentially rejecting God since the Ten Commandments come from Him. What does Christ say of His Ten Commandments? In John chapter 14 verse 21, Christ says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him in revelation chapter 22 verse 14 we read blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city that's New Jerusalem in heaven. This is precisely the reason why that Satan, who is the father of lies, is using his lies and deceits through his ministers who are telling their followers that the law of God is void. Satan, that miserable being who hates God and man, does not want you to go to heaven to be with God and spend eternity with your Elohim. That's why he attacks God's law, his holy Ten Commandments, because he knows that keeping the Ten Commandments of God are part of our covenant with God. According to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13 and Hebrews 8, chapter 8 verse 10, and that the keeping of God's holy Ten Commandments are a prerequisite for being considered at his, as a saint of God. According to Revelation chapter 14 verse 12, the bottom line is that Satan wants you to sin since he knows all too well that if you sin or break any of God's Holy Ten Commandments, including his Holy Seven Day Sabbath Commandments, you are separating yourself from your Creator who made you in His image, the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua. The separation from God will lead you to your death since man needs God to have eternal life. If you persist to continue to live in sin rather than turning away from your sin, you will not inherit as a gift from God eternal life in His kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who paid the ultimate price by dying on the cross at Calvary on our behalf for our sins. This is why it is so vitally important. This is why it is so critical that you strive to keep the commandments of God with the help and the guidance of the Holy Spirit of Truth. When you sin, the Holy Spirit of Truth will convict you of your sin and encourage you to repent or turn away from that sin that you committed so that through the sinless blood of the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua, your sins are washed away as per Micah chapter 7 verse 19, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, and the first epistle written by John chapter 1 verse 9. Where there is no law, there is no sin. But since God's holy Ten Commandments ruled the heavens, as per Psalm chapter 103 verse 20, therefore sin exists when we break any of God's holy Ten Commandments, according to James chapter 2 verse 10. Jesus Christ or Yeshua died for our sins, but that does not mean that you can stay in your sins or that you can sin freely or willfully. Heaven forbid. In John chapter 5 verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ says to the man whom he healed, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. And to the woman caught in the act of adultery, Yeshua says, in John chapter 8 verse 11 go and sin no more did you get that in both verses in John chapter 5 verse 14 and in John chapter 8 verse 11 Jesus Christ or Yeshua says sin 
no more. In other words, Christ is saying to all of us, don't transgress or break my law, my holy Ten Commandments. How can we call ourselves Christians or followers of Christ when we break His holy law which comes from Him? If you're being told by your pastor or priest that you need not to keep God's holy law, His Ten Commandments, or that you should keep your church's version of the Ten Commandments, then I strongly encourage you to run away from that deceitful worker of iniquity. If you follow and obey your lawless priest or pastor, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 says that your prayers to God are an abomination to Him. You can claim to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua, but you're being led astray by following wolves in sheep's clothing into believing that observing the law of God is no longer applicable. They preach about faith in Christ, which is the first step in our walk with Christ, but fail to explain what true faith really means. True faith points to our obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua and His divine law, which are the two conditions for being considered as a saint of God. According to Revelation chapter 14 verse 12, James chapter 2 verses 14, 17, 20 and 24 speak of faith and good works working hand in hand. In Matthew chapter 24 verses 4 and 5, the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned the first of several signs that will precede His return. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Are we not seeing this today, when the Pope of Rome, Catholics and Orthodox prelates and lawless 501c3 pastors claim that you don't need to follow God's Holy Ten Commandments? Stay away from these deceitful workers of iniquity, who are leading their followers away from God through their lies and deceits that come from the father of lies, Satan. Rather than following these false preachers and false apostles, look at Daniel's example who writes in Daniel chapter 9 verse 4, And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love Him, and to them that keep His commandments. As Christians, it is our duty to keep the commandments of God as per Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 and Daniel chapter 9 verse 4. True faith in Jesus Christ will encourage you through the Holy Spirit of truth to obey your Lord, God, King and Savior rather than listening to Satan's ministers. Keep God's Holy Ten Commandments with the guidance of the Holy Spirit of Truth and He, the Holy Spirit, will seal you as His disciple and saint according to Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. May the love, peace and grace of the Most High God be with you in these troublesome end times.